Welcome in Krakow. We are in Tyniec, uh, next to the Benedictine uh, convent, um, uh, sitting in my house, Barbara Wojtkowska, architect and another architect from China. Uh, we met uh, last uh, Saturday on the conference organized by, by Professor Bach, Habitaty in Wrocław, and uh, we had very nice conversation about feng shui, uh, because uh, I used to study feng shui uh, some time ago in China, and I learned a lot about Chinese culture, but my colleague from China, she's an architect, and she knows feng shui from her no common life, normal life in China, and uh, that's why we want to have a conversation about influences of old culture in our lives, what we can learn from feng shui tradition and how we can incorporate this in our work. Yeah, hi everyone, uh, my name is Ying Hong. Uh, I'm from the southwest, a big city called Chengdu in China. And uh, I'm so excited to be here um, for the conference and I'm more happy to meet uh, friends here and the architect here, and um, also it's a surprise. Like for me, um, there's uh, someone not Chinese, so interested in and did a lot of studying design for feng shui. Um, yeah, I have uh, stories about feng shui, but maybe not a professional way, but also for my life to understand. So it's my pleasure. And uh, I really like, yeah, this area with history, with beautiful landscape. Uh, actually, there is one uh, interesting story uh, and what you said to me today, because we were, it's a very special day in Poland. Mm. It's the 1st of November and everybody is going to the graveyards to visit uh, their families, which are not alive anymore. Mm. And uh, this is something special in Polish culture and in Chinese culture, and maybe in Taiwan nowadays, about uh, the, the worship about the uh, ancestors. But there is another problem with uh, graveyards. Uh, you told me that in China nobody would live uh, close to the graveyard, and the price of the land and houses is very low. And in Poland there are people they just don't, it seems they are not concerned about and they don't care. And that's what I learned in China. It was the same story when my teachers were, um, was telling me that it's very yin energy and you should avoid such places like uh, living close to the um, graveyard, close to the church, close to the hospital. Yeah, it's, uh, I think I feel it's a different uh, culture. Like um, in China, we call the, the housing to be two types, generally. Um, Yang, yeah, you know yin yang. Yang housing is for people alive, and the yin housing is for people past. So, for Chinese, I, for my understanding, and um, I know people don't like to keep in yang housing, and even their if their house or apartment feels a little bit dark, humid, or cold, they feel. This housing is not young enough, mm -hmm. and then they need to have a more sunshine and then maybe brighter color or more, more opening to get young energy coming to make their life better. I don't know. Um, it's part of our culture, but I try to understand in an architectural way, or try to understand that there's some maybe more knowledge behind it. So maybe Barbara, I don't know from your view to see in housing the young housing. What that mean to you? Exactly the same. Mm. And uh, when I was studying feng shui with different masters, from one guy I learned to check first. It, it looks like it, it must be old uh, Tibetan tradition, maybe also it was very practiced in China. Like you can come inside and if you, if you are sensitive enough, you could feel uh, of is it too much yin or too much yang energy. And then you start to except what you could see, because they are different schools, of course, they are uh, different schools of, of feng shui, uh, like form school and, uh, and uh, um, compass school, like flying star uh, method. But then, 
the feeling of the energy is too yin or too yang, it's, it, it's dependent on your sensitivity. And um, you can, of course, you can change the energy by introducing colors or shapes, or just uh, if the energy is excessive yin, uh, you can uh, you can make some ceremonies or using um, like using salt because salt when you put salt around and you remove it within a few days, it it, it cleans the energy of the house. And um, I think you have plenty of different ways of uh, of course you can put uh, more light and. Uh, and um, to clean the space, or the, I don't know, there are different <laughs> possibilities. But um, and you can uh, solve the problem by designing in a, like an architect. Uh, architects designed the house that you're using more uh, the special colors or shapes, uh, and you're changing the energy of the house. But but what I like very much about your culture that people are. Uh, um, Conscious about this, uh, even if Feng Shui was not pr really practiced la uh, for last uh, um, in 20th century, but then actually Feng Shui was meant to uh, for in in the in Yang version it was practiced only by rich people and by by um, it was meant for the uh, lower like it was not for for the common people. I mean, common people they were practicing only Yin Feng Shui for the for uh, the choosing the day of the um, um, to place the choosing the place for the graveyard or choosing the day when they uh, uh, put the body in the ground because it was a very special moment uh, they needed for this and the young feng shui was actually meant for the uh, for the king nowadays but still the tradition of using feng shui i think is very what what you telling me it's like uh, you grew up in China and you know a lot of stuff which people in the Euro in Europe don't know at all, and that's why they make mistakes, like buying the ground next to the ch to the church or next to the next to the graveyard. And um, I, I wish we have more sensi sensi sensitivity for this uh, for for this way of of uh, uh, feeling energy in uh, in our surroundings. Yeah, um, but when you say the hi history of feng shui, actually, for myself, for my understanding for Chinese feng shui history, is quite complex because you can go back 4,000 years ago. Uh, like you said, uh, young feng shui for king or for rich people, but actually feng shui at the beginning is be used by the kingdom or, you know, by the city to control for the whole area for settlement, um, even like for a town to be a new place. Yeah. They need some experts to uh, observe the place, like yeah. the environment, mm -hmm. the landscape, mm -hmm. water system, mountains, and then for security, for transportation, for have food, like mm -hmm. uh, we, China has like a thousand years of agricultural history. That's very important. So feng shui helps like uh, it's it's a similar things as us we are doing now like urban planning mm -hmm. we have such like a scientific aspects to mm -hmm. have a better town planning but uh, in the past for chi China is feng shui with this knowledge is quite professional actually if you read really about the books but then going with the times going. And then, especially go to Qin Dynasty, and then later on, it's getting more like complex, like Little maybe knowledge. something, yeah, yeah many something from personal understanding, not really professional, because mm -hmm. the feng shui is so open, so complex, so many mm -hmm. many things adding up. Maybe some only just uh, like uh, so is uh, superficially yeah, something, yeah, not yeah. with. Uh, you know, professional, scientifically work. So that's um, to go to Republic of China, yeah. you know what happened uh, in 60s, 70s, 80s. And the feng shui not really la allowed to talk yeah. like yeah. in the public. And especially for professionals like architects, they say, why you talk about feng shui is so superficial? Is it, yes. You shouldn't do uh -huh. that. 
So in those day times, feng shui is something bad. It's something yeah. not uh, yeah. not uh, reasonable. But recently, we go back to see our history, culture, like Chinese now try to find their own identity, find their old culture back, traditional culture back, and then find just so many things in the feng shui history. And then, so now like getting popular again, but maybe in another way. So another it's way, very yeah, interesting. They, maybe they start to understand that the, 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 the huge knowledge and there is so yeah. much um, under the level what we could, could really understand from feng shui. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel in Poland, people are, uh, what they understand from feng shui, they are the superficial stuff. Which is oh the red color or and it is and it's but it, the knowledge is so deep and so going like five thousand years ago and the the system is based on uh, on uh, astrophysics and that's why we should really d try to to find out what what is actually the basis for this for this knowledge and trying to we can try try to use this in our daily life as architects and um, when I uh, I have. I went for the lecture of Hong Kong architects uh, in when I was living in, in Holland and after the lecture I asked them, um, during the lecture I asked mm -hmm. them um, if they are using feng shui mm -hmm. uh, in design mm -hmm. uh, of the buildings in the center of the city and they said, oh this is just rubbish, you're telling us that it's superficial, we don't want to talk about it and after the lecture, the guy asked me, oh, do you know something about uh, mm. uh, feng shui? Because we, you, you see, I, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but we, we have to use it in every building and we are actually looking for architects that didn't have the knowledge because it's very, sometimes very difficult to, to uh, communicate between architects and those people which are mm. practitioners mm. Uh, if they are not uh, uh, trained in uh, architecture, they are talking completely different language. And the architects should understand what such a guy who is mm, not, uh, mm, I mean, using the uh, uh, using the uh, the symbols and topics and uh, and uh, um, some even some uh, how shall I tell feng shui in feng shui you use uh, symbols to show uh, to describe the energy. And then, if architect, uh, architect uh, should understand what it means, it's very difficult to combine the knowledge between uh, common practitioner and the architect, and they having problems with interpretations. And I can imagine it must be very tough. But maybe one day, uh, I heard uh, the story, that it's already, or, or, or the, um, the part of the study for architects in London, in some schools in London and in New York, and I think it's very good for for the developing of a uh, more spiritual way of designing uh, the space for living people. Yeah. I think uh, for my own experience, like uh, when I was um, a student at a university for architecture, like the 90s, and uh, actually I refused to study feng shui, even like I say with my Grow growth uh, with the uh, Chinese culture. Everyday life, I know something about feng shui. My parents, and my friends, you know, people around me. But at the university, I think it's a superficial. Absolutely, I like to learn like modernism or yeah. architecture technologies, like because I treated as an engineer, engineering yes. or science. Yes. But then, when with my age now, I found. Yeah, feng shui, because from this word, feng means wind, shui means water. Especially in China now, with uh, 30 years fast development, we, we had a problem with our environment. We had a lot of pollution, and then we had a problem like we cut the river to have uh, many dams, and then we change out uh, our surrounding like mountains. We have uh, too much power to change in nature. But in our thousand years uh, Chinese history, we always follow the nature. Like uh, yeah. in my lecture, I show uh, one sentence say, landscape is more important than buildings in Chinese paintings. The building always like uh, sit in the forest or mm -hmm. you know in the middle of the mountains, not on the top of it yeah. to change the skyscape. 
so people more humble in the past, and the Chinese, yeah. they like they themselves to be part of the nature rather than to control. But mm-hmm. why the Chinese modern life now or culture now for me is for me is not good enough. Like we we learn some thing, maybe not good. We control the nature, we change the environment, we cut the trees, and then we change the rivers. So that's. Now I find I myself I want to learn more about wind and the water, what naturally they should go. Mm-hmm. So that's the part, a bigger point for me, uh, make sense to learn. And I also I I feel it's amazing like you, mm-hmm. mm, you go to China and even here you you uh, use feng shui to go with the people because it's not only for Chinese for Chinese culture. Like we talk about globalization, thousand years ago, there are some people, you know, already yeah. globally moved. So it's not only for one culture; it's for the whole yeah. earth. So I think for now, like everywhere, same we change our environment, change our landscape. Maybe it's time to we need to sit back to see what happened around us. What's the nature? Mm-hmm. It wants to say something. We should listen. We should to see them. Yeah, that's <laughs> we have the same problems in Poland. It's yeah. exactly the same happening here because we used to have a beautiful architecture, mm. which was designed. Uh, the buildings were built from natural materials. The buildings were designed in a proper way, and we had like the sa- exactly the same story about the uh, what the form school in uh, um, what I learned from Feng Shui. The building should have uh, open space, just. Uh, in the front of the building and the, some high of the high mountain of, of some trees or in other buildings they should be behind and actually the armchair idea about that the building should be should have uh, every building should have like like a lower building from the left side and a little bit higher from the right side and so on mm. so on it was like be, being um, the feeling of of safety was important yeah. and when they were planning the buildings uh, they uh, they were, I, I mean, in Europe was exactly the same story like in China and the knowledge, we call it geomancy, and, what, and the feng shui, the, it is also a geomancy, only the Chinese, uh, Chinese geomancy. And the geomancy was uh, very well known actually in all cultures. Um, in India they call it Vastu Shastra. Uh, it's a bit different because India is a ve- is having very hot climate, and then the, in 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 China, I I think North China um, is ex- nearly the same climate like in Poland, and we looking for sun, and we are protect protecting ourselves from the north wind or from mm. the west wind, mm. and this the the designing princi- principles should be the same for North North China and for Poland. And we have nothing to do with Vastu Shastra because Vastu Shastra you have to protect yourself from the sun because it's just only for very warm climate. But then, uh, what I want to say is like this globalization for ages ago. They had the same knowledge everywhere, mm-hmm. and and it's very uh, interesting to follow uh, how this knowledge, g- uh, how people were finding all those ideas, and and how they could. Um, Get such a very profound knowledge, uh, and it it looks like in uh, every culture, every old culture was having their own principles, but the basics were the same. It's, yeah, it's a philosophical question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very nice if uh, if more architects should uh, be. I mean, I think more architects should be involved in the process of. Uh, of um, researching the, the this topic, I want to say uh, feng shui today because uh, it's a very theoretical. If you have a feng shui books from the past time, from you know old Chinese, they wrote a very you know complex mm-hmm. um, uh, things about it. But for me, generally for architects right now, especially for Chinese architects, I think you know buildings. Uh, or construction or planning happening in China, I hope it can be more honeymoon uh, to be, you know, balanced with... Not dominant. Yeah, yeah. balanced with the nature, balanced with, you know, water, you know, rivers. 
and also for people between themselves, because、uh, you know Chinese traditional、uh, housing used to be all courtyards, but people share、yeah. mm-hmm. facilities, share space,、yeah. like courtyards、yeah. with trees, with the sun、yeah. shine, with、yeah. wind, and then they have a share. But the, there's a well inside courtyard,、yes. so people、uh-huh. they get the same water、yes. to for drink. So they take off、uh, of a、yeah. public space.、Yeah. They They share their social life, yeah, and、um, mainly、uh, for agricultural time is basing on families.、Mm-hmm. But now getting to be, I know a kind of a way like、uh, people they don't know each other for neighborhood,、mm-hmm. and then、um, you know in the past the village like in Chinese China,、mm-hmm. the the door to door the neighbors they were not like、uh, face、Facing、to face. They、yes. need to change the. Direction、yeah. and、yeah. avoid like a conflict and make、yeah. a privacy. Very, yes. So for the streets is so interesting. It's changing、yeah. and then protect the people's privacy, but、yes. also you know kind of respect to your neighbors.、Mm-hmm. But with the courtyard to share the inside for outside, you know you take care of mm-hmm, streets. Mm-hmm. But now like in a residential area like is in China we call. 小区 like、uh, with ward living、yeah. area,、mm-hmm. the ward protected the residents inside.、Mm-hmm. But actually, I never talk with my neighbor.、Yeah. You know, in the apartment,、It's... I open my door and I go. Even I face to face, we little bit no,、yeah. a kind of away from each other. So it's not our、yeah. the. I really missing the time when I grew up in a big courtyard. With twenty two families, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and then、um, all kids, you know, we play in the big courtyard, and、uh, we have trees in the yard, and we have play place, and then people they put their own stuff just in the yard because it's, it's their own stuff, but they don't worry、mm-hmm. we're、well, lost.、Mm-hmm. So it's、mm-hmm. I really miss my child、uh, childhood with such a honeymoon、yeah. feeling about、uh, relationships. But you're talking actually about、uh, modern co-housing. That's the ideal、mm. model for people nowadays. People are looking for such such、yeah. solutions, but they are not existing. There are no no、uh, city is planned this way,、mm. and and、uh, it's fantastic example of good、um, co-housing project. But、yeah. I.、Um, it, Actually, Europe is having exactly the same tradition.、Mm. Traditions, bec- because when I,、uh, I know、uh, such examples from Netherlands.、Mm. In Netherlands, from twelfth, thirteenth century, the churches starts to、uh, to build、um, uh, this sort of、mm. solutions for poor people,、yeah. and they call it hofjes in、mm. in Dutch.、Mm. And it was like twenty twenty five houses. Uh, uh, All together next to the church very often, and they had li- like the、uh, the, uh, the one courtyard with one well inside,、mm-hmm. and everybody was using the、yeah. water from the well.、Yeah. All children were playing together,、yeah. and they stayed in very good condition till now. And it's one of the nicest monuments you could see in Leiden、mm-hmm. when I used to live. Leiden is having about thirty four, thirty five of such places,、mm-hmm. and it was from twelfth, thirteen, fourteen century. And this, this was the model for Europe for co-housing projects.、Mm. And、uh, if we can、um, repeat it nowadays in architecture, it it could be the solution for the、mm. family problems and、mm. uh, like small children growing together,、mm. play, playing together, not sit,、mm. not one child sitting、uh, behind with TV because mom and dad are busy.、Mm. And that、um, I you mentioned the same problem about young families in、uh, in China that they are now.、Uh, Actually, worrying about their future because、yeah. uh, people are divided, are not not anymore being uh, very uh, social. So so they are not living in the way like their、mm-hmm. parents used to live. You,、uh... Yeah, exactly. Because you know、uh, we have、uh, more than forty years to have a one child policy. So the children now for each family is so important, but they are so lonely because. Every family mainly they only have one child. Even now we say we in the city they can have two, but still like for long term one child, they don't have such a space they can play freely with other、mm-hmm. children. But like for me, I have two brothers, 
So my family not like that. Only one child. On the other way, if two one child from their own family they marry, then in the end they have four. Mm-hmm. Like elders, they have mm-hmm. to take care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, even China getting more Western or modern uh, modernism, but we still like have such a tradition. Say we respect、uh, elders. We need to take care of of our parents because our wealth system not good enough. For taking care of elders, so now like co-housing happened in China, ten years ago, people think, ah,、oh, we have such a problem with our elder people, and then we have problem with children, because co-housing encourage, like children be taken care of by many adults, not only one or two, because now look, children can grow up with more aspects rather than very narrow them down.、Mm-hmm. So people in China they try to do co-housing, but、uh, for government so far till now still really hard. Government not really give a policy to support co-housing, because now housing in China is a big issue. It's too commercial, too for marketing. Because、mm-hmm. yes. the government so,、yeah. uh, sell、mm-hmm. lands to developers.、Yeah. And the government made a lot of money by selling land. This is not a secret. I can say、mm-hmm. here because you can、yeah. read the new news from newspaper. That's a, everybody knows the problem. But co-housing need actually you need to get land cheaply.、Yeah. Second, you need to have a trust. Doesn't matter is a, a social aid or some people trust you and they give you money and then you organize everything.、Mm-hmm. But for in China now it's very hard. The land expensive, and then、yeah. the the trust or social it not really permitted by government. And then the third problem is people they don't have enough trust because、uh, you know after cultural revolution in even in my man, mind I think our deep trust really damaged. Yeah. During yeah. Yeah. cultural revolution, because that moment doesn't matter he is your father or she is your mother. You just、uh, you know care about the the social、uh, socialism party, so that's make our culture really totally damage the trust.、Mm-hmm. So now、mm-hmm. it's hard for Chinese to say we we believe together. We just put money together. We have、yes. our、mm-hmm. our community. So it take time. I think here、yeah. is the same story. Really? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought only like bad communication, bad communication between people, and no, no trust at all.、Mm. And、um, yeah, that we have to solve the problems、uh, yeah. which are in Poland and in China. Maybe、oh, we should、yes, do it、so、together. Oh, so we have similar things. Yeah. So <laughs> co-housing.、Yeah. I know in Netherlands,、uh, I visited also one、mm-hmm. project. I. I saw the Maya there. The process really、mm-hmm. uh, clear, and then government、yeah. support. So I hope like co-housing in China for future can have more. Doesn't、mm-hmm. matter is like basing on friendship or basing on families. But anyway,、mm-hmm. I think it's a good way to do. It could be also based on the rules, but、yeah. like, uh, I told this already、uh, before. Like whole Netherlands and England.、Uh, England is having also very successful co-housing、yeah. projects,、mm-hmm. and、uh, there is a lot of water around. And <laughs> the basic, basic law for the good for good communication is a、uh, water. Uh, uh, in in people, when people are living next、uh, close to the water, their their communication skills are growing, and they are much more easy around shapes and and water.、Mm. It is something which which increases the communication, and then they don't quarrel, they don't have conflicts. They could solve every problem problem by discussing the problem, and it's typical Dutch. Dutch, they they are having、um, they meeting、uh, a lot, they talking a lot about problems, and they could solve any problems only by discussing this, and that's why they they、uh, work fantastic in big groups, and they are very they taking seriously what. If they have some plans, they are working very hard, hard to to rea- realize those plans.、Mm. And in Poland, it's more like people are they want to do something, but they forget very quickly what they planned in the beginning,、mm. and they start to to make conflicts,、uh, conflicts、mm. with, with each other. Yeah, I yeah. think that's an interesting point. Like、uh, whether water 
or water system and help people to communicate better. Mm -hmm. I think that's because uh, I heard of like some people doubt. Really, is that would be true? Water with the water, you know, uh, yeah. living area, people more open or yeah. something. Yeah. I think that's interesting. I think from Feng Shui's theory, it happens. Yeah, but it's working on your. They call it like space psychology, or mm. but still, it's it's the element of water. If you if you going to analyze this uh, with the uh, principles of Feng Shui and mm. Chinese uh, medicine, you. It, this is the uh, the point that the water increase your communication skills. Yeah, I think in the past time, like old time, for people to communicate, like our transportation, water is more effi was more efficient than you know on the road because it took a yeah. long time yeah. to move from here to there, climb up the, across the mountains. Yes. Uh -huh. But with the river, it's much efficient. It doesn't yeah. matter you move yeah. lots or goods but, or people. Yeah. It's Because uh, China is so big, it, with this theory, I noticed exactly it happened in the east, in the south, with a more yeah. water system, people more open-minded mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. Like communicate uh, yeah. easier, and commerce is, yeah, um, uh, cooperate uh, better. Um, but for modern time, maybe it doesn't work anymore because uh, people not only move with the river, they move with the highway, yeah. airplane, <laughs> and then now internet, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> emails much faster. So I don't know. It's uh, interesting if we see the. 21st century, we move along, not water, we move along information moving. It's also mm -hmm. some energy, maybe invisible, mm -hmm. but it happens in everyday life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I spend a lot of time on, you know, computer or my telephone talking with people about the ideas. So, that's kind of another water system. Yeah. It's also interesting, but actually, communication is the key point yeah 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 <laughs> and the second point is mm. natural materials and the health mm. way of building and that's actually i'm very uh, curious about projects you are doing um, yeah because you left uh, your city career for a small place small village yes. and you started ngo mm. can you say tell us yeah about? this is story actually is it's um Exactly start from 2008, but before 2008, um, I came back from you know Canada back to China, and uh, I like uh, prefer local things, but I still with a lot of you know, uh, a study or research or knowledge or training or in the West country like I study also in England. I like some you know glasses, still like a very uh, even concrete, mm -hmm. but. Um, I go to local city, Chengdu, quite local. I notice, wow, well, such a local Chinese culture still is part of my own. But on the other hand, like 2008, happened an earthquake, and a big yeah. one. Yeah. It's uh, uh, May 12, 2008, mm -hmm. uh, 8 degree. So after earthquake, because it's so close to my place, and then I was teaching in the university, and then by chance we worked with the Shingo Ben, the Japanese architect, mm -hmm. and then he did a donation of design of a paper tube mm -hmm. temporary buildings for the earthquake area. So I'm in the uh, design. Uh, I'm the supervisor of a Chinese part, and then to finish the project. Uh, since then, I found like um, some material, maybe not uh, professional, like concrete or steel or, or gra glasses, and then it can be the by everyday life stuff, paper or like a uh, straw, you said, uh, some like a hemp. Yeah. Yeah, the, or cloth, even cloth. Mm -hmm. it's, just adding like nature material can be part of uh, architecture and then to be more human feeling because uh, after the 2008 earthquake, many people, including me, suffered a lot because so many people died, especially in the small places. They did a bad concrete building 
and it's mm -hmm. killed so many people, especially you know yeah. in the school. Yeah. So at that moment, I hate concrete because yeah. it's. I really feel scary yeah. about so heavy yeah. block buildings. Yeah. And then after, you know, earthquake, you need there was so big, you know, rubbish of concrete. You don't know how there was yeah. them because it's a huge garbage mm -hmm. class of buildings. So it take a long time for people to yeah. clean them. It's not recyclable, you know. Yeah. But I, I, anyway, but some people use it to do more like uh, mm -hmm. recycling bricks. But mm -hmm. mostly they just, uh, they you know, the, you, yeah, you, it's a hard you, to recycle. Everywhere recycle. is a big problem because you can't do anything with this. Only yeah. you can crush mm. this and use it again as a second, uh, second yeah, it's not, not uh, no, so good quality. Mean, not, not good, good quality, quality actually. Mm -hmm. And also make a lot of pollution because you know the yeah. the dust. Yeah. So since then I feel like a natural, uh, also light, like a wood structure, like, uh, you know, straw and then good mm -hmm. insulation, but need a good mm -hmm. insulation for, for protect for housing. And uh, I try to do that. So mm -hmm. uh, also, I found uh, a lot of knowledge I can learn from local villages, like their traditional housing. They deal with earth. They deal with uh, bamboo, with wood. So I start to f um, turn my focusing away from uh, big city architecture to mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. village uh, countryside buildings. Mm -hmm. I try to learn from local. And then also with my NGO project, I like uh, students uh, from primary school to university students. Mm -hmm. Not only as I used to teach at the university, I like uh, they touch the nature, like the earth or the bamboo, the wood, even when they are child ch children. Mm -hmm. So they uh, from city, the children knows wow. The nature of material like this, and it can mm -hmm. make a a, mm -hmm. a building. I think yeah. maybe that's uh, I think it's a good for for education. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> and you, you were involved in the project of uh, the building uh, made from the mm, ramped earth. You were talking about, and there were one well, eight hundred uh, students working yeah, in this yeah, project. Yeah. 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 And I have some uh, images like I uh, can share because uh, we have uh, activities for educate. We have a kind of education mm -hmm. uh, camp for mm -hmm. winters, holiday for summer holidays, and then students from Beijing, like uh, mm -hmm. or you know big cities, Chengdu, uh, Shanghai, they come for learning, like mm -hmm. in countryside experience. You know different. Uh, uh, environment or, or life that I teach them to say what it is about mm -hmm. architecture and then give a chance like they can build up their own yeah, house very important, yes. <laughs> yeah and you were doing the structures from bamboo like a dome yeah. structures yeah very, we did the nice. bamboo use about they uh, learn how to cut a bamboo and then make a stripes and then use the mm -hmm. ten tension of the bamboo mm -hmm. play with it to see how mm -hmm. bamboo can form, can get a form, and then mm -hmm. become a space. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, they learn from the bamboo itself, because the bamboo structure really amazing. It's learned from nature, because the bamboo can be 10 meters high without mm -hmm. break down. Yeah. Because naturally, it has a, like inner support. Yeah. So, well, like some high-rising towers. Yes. Copy yes, bamboo yes. structure. That's why it's so good mm. uh, material uh, uh, against the uh, earthquakes. Yeah, and I have is. seen I have seen in Bangkok uh, mm. buildings like ten levels high, and their all structures around was built from bamboo. And yeah. it, it's amazing, and people are just climbing on that uh, structure outside yeah. uh, to work on the concrete. Uh, solid uh, walls. Well, actually, the bamboo is much better. Yeah, bamboo is a really good material and uh, also it grow fast and then mm -hmm. uh, it can make uh, some uh, panels even stronger than steel. So yeah. there are a lot of, uh, you know, future for bamboo mm -hmm. materials. Mm -hmm. And then 
also we use earth, but uh, for earth, um, uh, how to say, Stump, yeah. stamped uh, walls or earth bricks, like uh, such a local build, uh, housing typology, but the still need uh, to improve mm -hmm. the material. Because in the past, the people, local people built the wall very thick mm -hmm. to have uh, insulation mm -hmm. and also have the structure to be stable, but it costs too much. Yeah. You know, the labor yeah. now is very yeah. expensive and then such a building, the soil for the earth mm -hmm. break or the stamped earth wall uh, need a very good soil. Yes. Mm -hmm. We we had the soil from the rice field because mm -hmm. you shouldn't you couldn't only just get any soil to get a such yeah, building. Yeah, clay inside. Yeah, clay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but I know like uh, in some countries and even in China now, some universities and institutes try to, uh, you know, experiment. Yeah, do research yeah. or experiment uh, mm -hmm. like a new earth breaks or walls for mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, natural materials like you said, it has a um, character with nature and then it can breathe. Yeah. It's not a, you know, uh, artificial or of no course. life mm -hmm. material, it's with something. Yes. But I didn't really just see natural material in the only past, like old way you should uh, combine with what happened yeah. now? Innovation. Yeah. That's what we Innovation, do in Poland yeah. with the clay, with lime, with mm. hemp, uh, hemp concrete. We're trying to um, make innovative way to build with natural materials. Yeah. And it's a big issue in modern architecture. And actually, I spent uh, I, for twenty years. I was a member. Mm. I was member of the organization mm. introducing that that way innovative way of building in Netherlands. Mm. And uh, I learned a lot because they, they were making a lot of research and, and uh, by using uh, like lime uh, or clay plasters, they were helping mm. people with asthma, with big huge health problems. Because mm. when you introduce a little, even if you introduce one uh, material like uh, lime or clay plaster inside of your home, you can uh, clean the pollution which is which we have mm. in our mm -hmm. homes uh, from modern materials yeah. and um, you can solve the health problems for children it's a very very interesting topic and uh, it's it's it needs attention of architects being more involved and having the knowledge yeah. about how it works uh, actually for um, how we can help uh, people uh, in health problems, in mm. psychic pro problems, yeah. we can solve so many problems of modern society yeah. uh, by um, learning more about biology, about uh, chemi chemical stuff, the chemical emissions which we're getting from modern materials, and uh, by introducing that, that um, old uh, uh, way of building of old materials, we, we're making innovation in modern architecture. Yeah, exactly. And uh, also come back to the topic of feng shui. I think natural material, um, in some words, give um, like you said, more healthy mm -hmm. and also warm atmosphere yeah. for living. Yeah. That's yeah. important yeah. because, uh, mm, like insulation, why it is so important? One is for human mm -hmm. beings, mm -hmm. like comfortable and also keep warm, mm -hmm. and uh, also. Um, it's for, you know, to have a, such a space, like, uh, to be more friendly and, uh, mm -hmm. for, for people, so. <laughs> okay, we covered yeah. the form of the building, <laughs> we want to live in a courtyard <laughs> building. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. <laughs> with <Yeah>. atrium. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to have a round building with an mm. round atrium inside, a very big mm. one for 20 families. I mean, I would like to design such a house. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. Uh, and now we want to have it from uh, natural materials. Yes. Only. <laughs> and bamboo and wood and clay and, mm. uh, and uh, lime. Uh, uh, what the social problems? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let's talk about social problems. We can solve with a good architecture. I mean that, that co-housing co projects. And I, I had um, during the habitat conference uh, in Wrocław, 
I was talking about transition towns mm. and transition. There is another story about communication between people because the movement of transition towns, uh, which which start in England, um, I, I think it was about ten, twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, in nine, in, no, sorry, in twenty, uh, in twenty, uh, two thousand six. Mm -hmm. This movement is getting so many people involved in ca in countries like uh, um, England, like mm -hmm. uh, Netherlands, uh, United States. A little bit, I, I heard stories about the successful stories from China. Mm -hmm. that some some cities, these people are. Uh, it, it's it's not political. It's just a movement. People, uh, mostly living in outside of, of the cities, are trying to get some ground some some places to grow local own food um, the movement could this movement could solve the problems of people which are unemployed and they can't find a job because within small societies they are founding the way to earn money it, uh, it is about barter about sharing economy uh, it is about local cu currency but they having uh, in toughness they have local uh, own money for last uh, 10 years and they are very, I mean it is like 8 years, sorry, it's not 10 years. But then um, this movement is a grassroots movement and uh, it's also about co-housing because many of those people they don't want to live in the, in concrete uh, houses and mm. they want to move away. Yeah. And But but in Poland we, there, somebody tried to do this and didn't work at all. And this, for me, is one proof again that it's very difficult in, in such countries which are spoiled by communistic and social, socialistic way of, I mean, politics. The, there's, it's very difficult to rebuild the, um, the, I mean, the, the social connections between people because mm -hmm. they are divided and they are. That's what you said about tr the trust. They don't trust each mm. other. And but I hope uh, there is a hope in the future. I hope we can <laughs> we, we we can uh, start uh, the, the, this movement of transition towns uh, yeah. could be could work also in Poland in mm. the future. When you say transition town, actually, um, to the issue like uh, people transform like uh, in China now. There's more and more population. They try to move from big city to countryside, mm -hmm. not only for fresh air, bigger space to live, but also for safer food, mm -hmm. and also for a community. Yeah, because they can share their same value. Mm -hmm. In the city, maybe you mainly use your money to buy a place, mm -hmm. but uh, like if you use you do co-housing in countryside or you choose somewhere to do something with deal with agriculture, you should have a field. Then yeah. you have a different yeah. community, then it mm -hmm. might change your whole life. Yeah. So for this case, like uh, I like to show here what yeah. uh, uh -huh. what uh, I'm doing, like uh, this mm -hmm. uh, logo, actually in Chinese letters, mm, the meaning, like you said, uh, it's about a community and then what uh, me and the, with my friends, we are from the city, we try to connect with the local community and with them, try to do something together. Um, mm -hmm. These things, like this is the tea mm -hmm. from Yunnan, because I just mentioned uh, we did, uh, we opened a library as an NGO program mm -hmm. in a small village, and then the rural library with books for children. And then, but then now we're doing teas. So the tea we had, um, had the fresh tea. Very we tasty, yeah, nice. and then yeah. we had them from the farmers, and mainly like organic tea. Mm -hmm. And then we have this logo means, and in this province, Yun means clouds. Mm -hmm. This letter, and um, because you know Chi Chinese letter, they are pictography. Pictograms. Pictography. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this means field. It's more like uh, have a 
rice is filled mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I can because draw. Because this would be <laughs> yeah. bigger. Huh? Mm. So I pick up uh, the words to say what happened mm -hmm. with uh, uh, our cultural from language and also and for our dream for community connection. So this is a square. It's uh, something you can a see field. a field or yeah. some uh, space. Yeah. Then this word coming to be four parts. Mm -hmm. It means can be mean a window, <laughs> yeah. but actually origin originally mean this one. Yeah. Field. Oh, sorry. I do this a way. Field. Field. Yeah. It, it, does it, it make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> hear it. Okay. So Chinese, like uh, thousands of years, of history is about agriculture and about rice. Yeah. So we should have um, like a fields to grow up rice, and then get uh, the harvest maybe once or twice, mm -hmm. at uh, most only three times mm -hmm. a year. Usually once from year. You have a rice and then you have a such, a, you know, small grains from mm -hmm. this um, plants. So this is getting families. Yeah. So this word means people working in the fields. They need mm -hmm. cooperate. So our logo is uh, we like we from city, but we move there. We try to work with the people yeah. at the site, and then this was um, this was oops <laughs> like yeah, this, yeah. but um, it's a simply fight from traditional Chinese writing. Should I like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this word, a field again, and then plus this one. So it uh, combined with two, plus this one. This means yeah. earth. Mm -hmm. This actually, we already say field. field. So one day together, this means neighborhood or neighborhood, yeah. rural community, we say. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we'll come back to see this one. Mm -hmm. This part means young man. So our logo means mm -hmm. we work in this province. Mm -hmm. uh, we work on site the field uh, for neighborhood, mm -hmm. yeah, for the rural community. But we work with young people men. there. <laughs> but why young men getting this word? Because in agriculture time, men important to yeah. to do a lot yes. of uh, outdoor work. work. <laughs> yeah. So this uh, in Chinese letters means um, hometown, hometown or means yeah. countryside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the both both meaning. Yeah, so that's why There's so many meanings. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with this logo, our dream is we have uh, the education program for children but we also like to deal with the community work for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and then we have this tea nice from local mm -hmm. farmers but we try to sell it a little bit maybe more expensive than the market should it be mm -hmm. then we get the money to to help the library and then to help yeah. the farmers very so nice. that's yeah. the story <laughs> mm, very beautiful story yeah. and the logo is the I like the yeah. uh, several meanings behind the yeah, pictograms the and the, this actually all um, philosophy behind. <laughs> yeah, also it's about, uh, if you will say it's a feng shui, means 
we care yeah. about uh, mm -hmm. the field or care about uh, people in the on the side. Yeah. It's yeah. down to the earth, like yeah. this words, uh -huh. down to the earth, and then this means uh, the clouds. Yeah, so we have clouds, we have fields, mm -hmm. we have uh, people in the fields, fields and then we have and uh, young people. Because yeah. in China, China, the countryside, we lose young people. They, yeah. Most of them, they go to big cities, they don't mm -hmm. want to stay home. Mm -hmm. So getting less and less population, they, they mm -hmm. do agriculture. Mm -hmm. So yeah. agriculture, like uh, getting, you know, more like manufacture. So the food come from factory, mm -hmm. not from yeah, the field. The same story. So it's Poland. not <laughs> healthy. We should yeah. go back to nature. Everything directly from the earth. But that yeah. means you should put your energy, your your love, your concern mm -hmm. to the field rather mm -hmm. than to business mm -hmm. or to mm -hmm. factory. <laughs> yeah. So to be real rather than so that's why uh, I had a lot of workshop with students. Um, I like them to go to the site to work with earth, bamboo, mm -hmm. and the wood for building. Mm -hmm. Not only just sit in a classroom at a university in front of a computer to do beautiful designs, computer to you know get a lot of beautiful form. But when you ask them how the form become true, they say no idea. Yeah. They even don't know how the brick become worse. They don't know how wood cut the pieces to. Get you know so beautiful yeah. Chinese wooden mm -hmm. you know uh, wooden structures, structures. Yeah. yeah okay yeah. And in the Middle Ages they people they wanted to be architect and the builder they supposed to study for thirty years to be the uh, supervisor I mean if, <laughs> it means that when they were let's say they were starting starting when they were fifteen years old. And they start. They had to learn everything about material, about cutting the stone, yeah. about the building, and then they could uh, uh, just uh, make some structures. And then when when they were old, they they could be the director of the of the work. And they, 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 they had to study some more spiritual way of building, which was very important as well. Yeah. Also, I I I think you mentioned important word about uh, you can do it. Use your hands. Mm -hmm. uh, when like spirit should be there, but if your hands not there, I thought the spirit yeah, can be true. there. So it's that's true. why handcraft now actually mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And people maybe like this. I write by myself. Yeah, I I didn't uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Use the uh, like a uh, factory way to do it. Mm -hmm. I draw by my hand, and uh, I think important uh, you have something personally here, mm -hmm. and then uh, mm -hmm. you can feel the texture. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means uh, you yourself there and with your, your sprite, yeah. the yes. energy will yeah. go here, and the people can feel. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's uh, someone write it, mm -hmm. not from the factory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's extra value to this mm. product, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the tea is very nice, very Thank tasty. You. Yeah. I will <laughs> let I will Thank go back you. to like um, mm -hmm. you know the local guys to know, mm -hmm. and that they will be happy so well. The tea from Yunnan, from China, travel so long, yeah, and then go tea to the <laughs> another country, and then yeah. people like it. Yeah, yeah really, really. Mm -hmm. I think it will help local community. Very nice. Mm -hmm. so maybe break. Yeah, <laughs> break. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Oh. 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 Oh.